Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Vinyl Den, your channel for record collecting by record collectors. I'm Nick. I'm Ian. Today we're talking about something that I am not a huge fan of. Ian's going to try to convince me otherwise, and that's progressive rock. There's a bunch of links down below. You got links for the Vinyl Den Facebook group, for the merch page, for the Spotify and Apple Music playlist that I put together every week, and the Patreon page. So make sure you check all that out. Like always, if you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give me all thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. And make sure you hit that notification bell so you're notified every time I release new episodes. So I've never been a huge fan of progressive rock. Even though there are bands, there are progressive rock bands that, you know, I like some of their music, but I don't know. I know you've been a much bigger progressive rock fan over the years. I've listened to a lot of progressive rock with you. Just a lot of it just never really clicks with me. So I figured we'd kind of talk about some albums that are like some really great entry points in the, in a progressive rock. Right. I guess the question is, is what is progressive rock too? Ultimately, I think it's one of those questions. It's kind of like, it's almost rhetorical because there's a lot of like music that you wouldn't, I wouldn't like flat out say is progressive rock, but has progressive elements. Yeah. One of one of the standards for progressive rock is these, you know, epic songs, longer longer format songs, and you could go as far as saying Green Day has had progressive music because they've got ten minute songs. Yeah, I, I mean, when, when I think where there's of, a lot of time changes and, and musical changes that would normally be associated with progressive rock. Yeah, but they're not a progressive band. So ultimately, I think at at its core, progressive rock or prog rock is kind of a big blanket. If you go back, I, I tried looking up like what was considered the first progressive rock album, and most of the websites I saw put um, in the Court of the Crimson King yeah, by so that's King the, Crimson. That's the first thing that pops into my head. And I guess that's probably true, but there's been a lot of talk over the years. Um, I watched a documentary from like 1984, and they put albums like Sgt. Pepper in there, and they put albums like uh, Piper at the Gates of Dawn in there. Yeah, those aren't progressive rock. No, but the, it's in terms of what considered to be like those early or bit. like prototypical or, yeah. or prototype exactly. albums that would More, like eventually lead to progressive rock. I can definitely see some progressive elements right. on those albums, but I would not consider either one of those albums no. anything close to progressive rock. No, because I mean, let's face it, the Beatles are not progressive music. I would argue that Pink Floyd is not a progressive rock band. They're an art rock band. They're an experimental band. They've got progressive elements, especially, I would say, on Adam Hart Mother and Metal are probably their two biggest albums that are close to being progressive rock. But they, Dark Side of the Moon is always thrown in there. Dark Side of the Moon is not a progressive no. rock album no. in any stretch of the imagination. You can't really call it a, a, a pop album either. It's an art rock album. It's an art rock album, exactly. And I was going to say, it's not... That's not a knock on Pink Floyd, because if you're talking to a bunch of pr prog people, they're going to put Pink Floyd in a prog progressive rock category. No, I don't think and I, I think it does a disservice to Pink Floyd, quite honestly, because if you if you come from progressive rock, that's ex the, 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 the top notch or the, the pinnacle of what progressive rock is, the Emerson, Lake of Palmers, the Yes, the early Genesis, and then you compare Pink Floyd to it, it's going to it's going to throw you off because it's not the same. No, it's not. It's one of those there. instances where you're like, okay, one of these doesn't belong. Exactly. And it's Pink Floyd. Exactly. So I don't like to lump them in any way. But Court of the Crimson King is definitely, I would say, probably the the earliest example of a progressive rock album. At least, at least on like the the main stage uh, and like the mainstream. I, I would right. Say so. Yeah, because you could argue that earlier on you had artists like uh, Arthur Brown. Uh, he was doing a lot of the kind of the similar things, the progressive-ish kind of music. Arguably, you can even say the first two Alice Cooper albums are a bit proggy as well. Okay. They are. <laughs> that, they, I think right. they are. They're that's not right. anywhere near the level of what I'm going to talk about today, but you could say they're a bit proggy because they, they were still that Frank Zappa-y okay. you know, element. I think when it comes to like the stereotypical progressive rock albums, there is a there's an element of complexity that I don't think is there on like Sgt. Pepper mm -hmm. or a lot of Pink Floyd albums. That's why I, I think when I, when I think of progressive rock, there's a pro, there there's that that element that I think really kind of has to be there. I'll, I'll, I'll say, from my experience, from my listening experience, a lot of times it seems like complexity for the sake of being co complex. But you know, kind of go. I guess kind of go through Sometimes. some of the albums that you brought with you. So 
when Nick posed this this topic to me, he posed it as like kind of working or what you know, what I would suggest to people who don't know progressive rock and kind of showing like uh, albums that might get you started yeah. into progressive rock. And what I found just in, in going through some of the, the lists, which I don't agree with the vast majority of them, but just thinking about it, progressive rock came late to the U S in terms of U S bands. Yeah. And there was, there's a sensibility about American rock bands that I don't think exists in, in the British, which the British dominated progressive rock in the 70s and even into the early 80s. So I figured I would kind of start with the American bands because they're going to be the easiest to get into. Grand Illusion by Styx is a great kind of introductory because it's not heavy prog. But that's got like uh, I was trying to see Grand Illusion and... Uh, I, think I've, I think I've heard, just like looking at the track listing, I think I know two songs off this album. Which the... Honestly... It's one of the tracks that is like my favorite on it is probably the least proggiest track, and that's uh, Man in the Wilderness. I love that song. It's probably my favorite stick song of all time. But this is kind of a good introductory because it's not heavy. The songs aren't going to like, they're not bogged down. They're not overly complex, but they're complex enough to be proggy. Yeah. Um, and Sticks was is still considered a prog band for the most part. They went away from it for a while, but most bands do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that would be a good starter, starting point, I think. Now, going, sticking with American progressive rock bands, but going a little bit more heavier prog, uh, you're going to go with Kansas. And this is one album you're going to talk about that I know, because yeah. this is my album. Right. So. Um, I have two copies myself, which is very rare. I don't usually have multiple copies of albums. Uh, but it's my favorite Kansas album, too. But there's a lot of heavy, heavier prog elements on this album. I mean, there are actually, their first f- five albums are very, very prog, by design. Yeah. But this one, I think, is, is a bit more accessible because there's a few poppier tracks on here and you're still getting that, that level of, like you said, complexity that's not... It's not complex. It's not overly or, complex. Right. But there's some instrumentals on there. It's really it's really a kind of a good example of that late 70s American progressive rock yeah. music that is still on the accessible level. The one thing I will say about progressive rock albums, they typically have great album covers. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That and metal bands. They, I don't know what it is. Progressive rock and metal bands have the best covers. So this next one, this is where we're kind of getting back into like the British uh, progressive rock. And this is this is heavy prog, but there's some popper, poppier elements on this. Uh, they had some hit singles off this album. And it's Fragile by Yes. Fragile. Yes. Um, I don't know if I know any songs off You do. One. Roundabout. Um, which, by the way, Roundabout has, I think, Chris Squire's bass playing on Roundabout is second to none. I mean, because it's, it's, it's a bass-driven song. But, it, I mean, Roundabout has, gets heavy airplay on classic rock radio stations. And it's very kind of, it's accessible, but it is still very prog. I don't know if I know the song, Ian. Why don't you go ahead and sing it for me? Uh, well see here's the thing it's funny because i say that nick nick's nick's a bass player so it would be a song that i think he would like to listen to i'm sure he's heard it i'm sure i know i've heard it before um but uh john anderson's voice is definitely not a vocal i don't i think you will like um (laughs) given your tendency towards not liking uh high pitch singers uh but anyway well they're not he's not like over the top like some other yeah i suppose well. that's true but i i would i would say his vocals aren't much different than getty lee's okay overall okay but yeah fragile it's a i think this is a good introductory to introduction to the band as well uh because you're going to get those prog year elements but you're not going to have those long uh 30 minute 25 minute songs like you know tales from a topographic ocean or anything like that so uh this would be a good introduction to like british progressive rock so going back to the U.S., um, this is more of a modern day. This is this album came out in 1995. Uh, this is the band's first album. I mean, most of them have been playing in other bands, but um, it's Spock's Beard, The Light. This is one I, I know for a fact I've never listened to anything from this band. Now, I would say, because I'm kind of getting less accessible as we're going, this is kind of a progression, uh, no pun intended. It's still accessible enough because... The songs, even though they're longer and they're going to have those weird time signature changes and everything else, it's not so overblown that it's hard to listen to, yeah. which is something I think that is kind of what you were getting at when you said 
uh, complex for complexity's sake. Um, Neil Morse is this all this stuff he wrote, a lot of it from just liking progressive rock, but also not being satisfied with the way his career was going yeah. at the time. So there's a lot of person personal stuff to this album. And if you know anything about Neil Morse, he that's all he ever does is personal stuff because, well, that's a whole other video. Um, but um, I think this is an album that you could go to and listen to. And though it's there's a song on here that's 26 minutes long, it changes enough to keep you interested. And overall, it's still, still kind of keeping in, t- in tone with what progressive rock is. Now we're going to go for this one. This is going to go a little bit to the extreme. So Emerson, Lake and Palmer's Tarkas. I love this album. I would say this is probably their best album. I'm sure there's some debate there, but it's my favorite of their albums. Now I chose this one over some of their other albums as far as introductory to progressive rock, because this has some songs on it. that are shorter, a little bit more rock driven, but it, the the title track. I don't know why I keep looking at the back for track listings. There's not a track <laughs> listing on any of these damn it's, albums. It's a gatefold. I know it is. So there's long songs on here. The title track is the best. It's it's probably again. It's it. I love this album. It's from 1971. It came out before Brain Salad Surgery, which is kind of their famous album. It is mainly it's mainly for the artwork, I think. But this is a much better album, and I think this this elements of this that are a little easier to digest if you're not really accustomed to prog, but it's still pushing that extreme yeah. level of prog. So it's a good, I think this is a good, if you kind of go, if again, if we're going in progression, it's probably at the tail end, the harder to access prog. The, the least accessible? The least accessible, but it's still accessible enough to maybe get a, a feel for like Emerson Lake and Palmer's yeah. music and, and what pro, really what prog music is associated with. So this last one is the one I have to pop into every video that I do with Nick. This, I feel like this, you should just keep this out for me to use in any video. Um, and it's thick as a brick. I will say out, out of all the albums you talked about, this is the one album I absolutely know. Right. The reason I picked this, I, I would say that Tull as a progressive rock band, and I'd say that in quotes, is probably the most accessible, honestly, of all the ones that I've mentioned. Yeah. What I like about this album, this is my favorite album of all time. I've said that a million times. I'll keep, I'll say that till I till I'm no longer with this planet. However, this album was actually written and produced in a to make fun of all that that bombastic, over the top. It was complex, almost a joke. Yeah, com, being complex for complexity's sake. This was a joke of that. It was a, it was it was satirizing that, and yet it ends up being considered by many to be one of the most. One of the best progressive I'll, rock albums I'll say out there, probably the or one of the most successful. Progressive yeah, rock you could albums. argue that. Now I, I looked at lists, and most lists don't have this as number one. Yeah. But it's I've seen it as low as number two, and I've seen it as high as number seven. I don't think it's it. There's albums that they had higher the rated higher than this that I didn't agree with. That's what I like about this because it is, in many ways, everything that progressive rock is but done in a way that it's meant to make fun of it. And I, the irony of it becoming, again, one of the greatest rock, progressive rock albums of all time, it, it almost makes it kind of legendary in that yeah. sense. Well, that's all we got for you today, guys. Thanks for checking the show. Make sure you drop us a comment down below. Let us know what you guys think about pro- progressive rock. And I guess really, what would you consider like great entry albums for somebody trying to get into progressive rock? Let us know what you guys think. Like always, if you enjoyed the episode, make sure you see a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. That's all we got. Until next time. Talk to y'all later. Keep on spinning. Peace.